guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Halloween board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Chronicles War of Indigar. It plays one to four players, it takes about two hours to play and is for ages 13 and up. In the game Chronicles War of Indigar, it's a tactics based game in which there's going to be tiles that you place down to make up the board, depending on how big the board is, will be based on the number of players in the game, and you're going to be basically selecting a specific type of, uh, of army, and there's going to be different types of units you can choose from, and each of the armies play very differently, but the objective remains the same, gathering victory points, whether that be building certain bases, destroying certain characters, dealing with certain monsters, and other little things you can do, such as specifically lay waste to terrain. You'll be going throughout the game attempting to complete this, and depending on the length of the game, it can be either 7 or 10 points, all at the same time the uh, wilds is getting stronger, the monsters are getting more terrible and terrifying, and you're basically just trying to get those victory points. Once you do that, you win the game, the War of Indigar. This is one set in which you have four different character, four different factions to choose from, but it seems like they're going to be making a little bit more. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look down below. I'll show you what comes in the game, a little bit on how to play, and then I'll give you my review for the game. You ready? Let's do it! So here we have a two-player game set up for Chronicles War of Indigar, and as you can see, it takes up a lot of space on the board. When you're playing with two players, simply choose one of the four factions here, as well as the setup for the game board, which I've actually displayed right here so you can see a full two-player setup. The game's going to include the four different factions, as well as three or even four characters for each faction. You'll be able to choose three of them and place them down on the boards here. Uh, additionally, you're going to get your own, mm, these are basically buildings that you're going to be able to build throughout the game. Uh, you're going to also be getting these die here for combat. You're going to get starting resources as well as a bunch of tokens, a bunch of resource cubes. This board over here which indicates the turns as well as the value of each player's victory points. You're trying to get to 10 points and if you can do that you'll win. And in a starting game you're just trying to get to 7. Every player is also going to be getting these resource cards here. These uh, basically resource and gameplay cards, the player reference cards. And uh, you're just pretty much ready to go after that. Every player picks their specific factions. I went ahead and set it up for black and for red here. So when you set up, you're going to choose your three and get to choose which one of them you want to be your leader. After you've chosen your leader, go ahead and take a plus to your defense and place it on the level one area. Here's level one, level two, level three. Each of the characters have a movement, attack, defense, and health, as well as abilities that they can use, whether they be passive or active abilities. The other two are just your basic units that they can still level up and whatnot. They just don't start at level one, and you can't use your command ability on any of them that are not your commanding characters. Go ahead and on the side of the board here place all the buildings you'll be needing. This specific class here is not going to need really buildings because they're mainly interested in laying waste to the area. I have the Grinning Tyrant at level 1 and then I've got these two characters over here as my backups. Additionally you're going to go ahead and choose a chosen strategy. There's three to choose from. Once you've chosen a chosen strategy go ahead and take one of these tokens here and place it either face up or face down. If it's on the gold side it's going to reduce the cost of that specific ability by one of your choice. If it's on the little like, lightning bolt area, that's going to increase the value of the numbers with asterisks underneath the ability, but the cost will remain the same. After you got and chose that, you've got your starting resources of two ore, two wood, and three gold, along with your character tokens and your initiative tokens or your character action tokens. You're pretty much ready to go for the board there. Both, as you can see, black and red have sufficiently filled out their board. This is the starting board area here, which is set up in a two-player game, so it's already set up. I've got the starting locations which is red here and black over here. Red is going to get to be placed in any of these three areas here as you can see for the setup there is these three empty spaces each player will get one of those areas and be able to place in each of these areas. Then you have your wood, your uh, mining and your, your, your ore I guess and your gold and black would do the same. This in the middle here is a spirit board which will be placing these things down here which will give you victory points when you get two of them and you can spend them on other things as well. And then of course you have got your specific creatures here and these creatures are going to basically be moving around the board as as they go. Now you choose your initiative by choosing which player gets to go first and then begin the game. When you begin you're simply going to choose a player, a, a, a character, and then you're going to go ahead and put the little star to indicate that you're using that character and then they can move. Once they've moved their total movement, so in this case that'd be two, one and two, you're actually going to go ahead and flip these tiles over whenever you encounter them. Some of them will give you bonuses, some of them are resources, and some of them will block your way. 
For instance, this one here is going to give you a plus to attack, which you'll put on the character, basically giving you additional attack die when you choose to use them for attacking. Uh, there are three actions you can take. One of them is going to be explore, which is allowing you to flip a tile over without walking into it. Another is attacking, simply rolling your attack value versus your opponent's defense value and calculating the difference to health. And the last is being able to build these buildings. Now, black can't do it, but red can. And you can go ahead and look on the chart here, and it tells you the cost for level one, level two, and level three. And you're going to be building from one, two, to three. These things will provide resources for you at the beginning of the round. Uh, and that's pretty much it. After you selected this character here, the next player is going to get to go because in the beginning round, the monsters will not actually take any actions. And uh, so the red player is going to get to go. He'll go ahead and choose uh, which one of these he wants to activate. And then he's simply going to go ahead and move that specific character, its base movement. In this case, that'd be two, one, and then two. Flip it over the tile, see what it is. Go ahead and check the book to see what that specific ability the space does. It'll probably provide you with some benefit or negative. And then go ahead and check and see your, any of your additional abilities and whatnot. Take your attack and roll against your opponent's defense. That's a defense roll. That's the attack roll. This is six minus four, which would be two damage. When you do damage to your opponents or monsters, if you do two or more, that's going to score you experience. Experience will go on your board. If you eliminate certain monsters and uh, characters, you can actually get up to three, four, and even five. When you hit each of these markers, so one, two, and one, that would score you level one. One, two, one, and then two would score you level two, and so on and so forth. The way you win is victory points. And the way you get victory points on this track here are a certain amount of ways. If you can defeat your opponent's leader, that is going to score you victory points, and it'll tell you over here. Uh, if you ever spend two spirit, that can give you primacy victory points. And if you are able to level a character to level three, and then the other one is your outposts. Each of your outposts that you have on the board will provide you with one victory point apiece. And you're going to keep going. So that'd be after this, we go to this player again, and he would choose another of his characters to act. In which case, after that, these characters, these monster characters will start to act, like Oran Oriana, and she will simply move, and her, her ability is interesting. She'll actually move to the middle of the board. She's attempting to get there. And if she does, she'll start eating spirit. And these characters have their own victory conditions as well, so they can actually win, or they can be removed from the board and have to come back in a later round. Uh, after that activates, then it would go back to this player here. Then this guy would activate, and he's interesting because he will activate based on whatever unit was the last to make an ability. He'll move to that closest player's unit, in which case that player is simply going to have to deal with the monster, and it fu functions the same way as fighting would any other player. There is additionally certain spaces on this board that are likely to contain additional monsters that have their own rules based in the book, but most of them are just stronger, which will give you certain amounts of uh, experience when you're able to defeat them. Usually they're surprise attack monsters and they can be difficult to deal with. After all of your characters have received uh, one of these little star tokens, meaning everybody has acted, that is when the round is going to end. And when the round ends, the initiative marker will pass, allowing it for a new next player. And then you're going to go ahead and choose a new strategy or any strategy that you would like placing a new token down, allowing you to use that next ability in addition to any other abilities that are unlocked, and continuing from there by removing all of these. You'll get resources, you're gonna get other tokens and whatnot based on the starting round conditions for the specific scenario, and you're gonna rinse and repeat going around the board, fighting additional units, attempting to gain the primacy points in order to win the game by getting to 10 points. That's pretty much the idea of the game Chronicles of War of Indigar, basically a tactical game with interesting monsters and different victory conditions, as well as not your average type of way to win a tactical game. We'll come up though and I'll discuss how the game functions and what I think about the game and whether or not you should pick up this tactics based fantasy game. So let's talk about War of Indigar by Happy Gorilla Game Studios. Well, first of all, let's talk about the art. The art in this game is solid, in my opinion. It does exactly what it needs to do. It's got full artwork on each side of the card, which is very, very nice. All the cards, uh, graphic design is really well put and very easy to understand. Uh, the tiles, uh, specifically there, you get the grass background tile which then flips over and unique things can happen on it really well detailed even the uh, symbols are nice and easy to tell the difference between all the different monster characters have really nice looking artwork as well on all the different little tokens here really easy to tell the difference between the monsters the difference between the woods and the forest and uh 
the mines or all that. The specific quality of the components, like the miniatures, are nice. One of them popped off one of the legs, I just had to glue it back on. Uh, but that's because I guess these are like a little bit more flexible plastic, which is nice. So it's going to keep them from actually cracking or shattering. Likely, maybe a leg might pop off if you're not really careful. But for the most part, the quality of the miniatures are really nice. The quote cubes are cubes. And then you've got these little house tokens here, which are nice as well. It shows the difference between the three different types, and they're easy to tell as well. Detailed. Detailed is very nice. All of the player boards are high quality and uh, really nice, as well as the tiles here are nice and thick and high quality. They got some gloss on them, which is also nice. The theme of the game, you're basically fighting for Indigar. You're going as different types of clans or factions and you're kind of just clashing in the middle it plays like a tactics game for those of you who played uh, com video games maybe you would think of fire emblem heroes or maybe you think of some type of final fantasy tactics game it has a long resemblance to those games specifically and you can feel the theme of just basically going in with hand-to-hand -hand combat against other players mechanically the game works well as well you're playing a tactical fighting game now is it extremely different than other tactical games mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, there is some unique tactical decisions they've made in the game, such as utilizing the monsters and the fact that all the monsters have their own ability, car like they have their own cards and they function different ways. All the monsters have their own goals as well and what they're trying to do. Sometimes monsters aren't necessarily against you, but they can still win the game if you're not careful. So when you're dealing with your opponents and all of a sudden the monster's got four tokens on it and needs five, you're in deep duty because now you all have to work together to deal with that thing or deal with a monster who's slowly just eating players up to the point where now he is basically unstoppable when it comes to attack, messing with you. So you have to deal with the NPCs just as much as the other players because you can outright lose the game in that way. As far as the tactics go, you're gonna get to choose between one of three characters, and then of course when you use one, you have two left, and then your final one, trying to organize them and set them to where you want them to be is going to be very important. Certain characters will give benefits to characters that are adjacent. There's flanking in the game, there's going to be the the ability to uh, simply give additional actions. So for instance, maybe one of the characters like this guy here, the Grinning Tyrant, he's one of my favorites. If he, uh, if you use him as a commander, he's going to let you reroll all of their uh, friendly heroes die. Very useful. Leveling up is cool as well. You actually get to see your characters get stronger, but not to the point where you can't actually defeat them as the uh, the, the opponent. Of course, if you let somebody slide too long and their characters get too powerful, you're going to have a hard time dealing with them. Additionally, when you're moving across the board, flipping over tiles, it's random. So it's not a perfect information tactical game like some others. In this case, you don't know. Maybe it's going to give you two spirit, which will turn into a victory point for you. Okay, it could give you an attack bonus for your character until it passes on. The characters don't necessarily die. They just actually come back at the next round. Uh, additionally, you could have to deal with unpassable terrain or even event monsters that pop up and surprise attack you. So there's a little bit of that that happens in the game. But for the most part, you're going to run into bonuses as well as different resources that will allow you to build buildings and gain more resources throughout the game. The factions actually function differently as well. Certain ones are going to be more aggressive or more tactical, more defensive. Certain ones are actually not even going to be doing building at all, but simply attempting to destroy the land, destroying other people's buildings and whatnot, and they themselves can't build, and that's going to be the Cabal. So the fact that all the different factions have their own uniqueness to them is pretty cool, just like the monsters themselves. If you like a tactics game, with a little bit of chance, a little bit of uh, decision making that you need to make throughout the game. The fact that you're going to have to go throughout the rulebook a little bit for the first two games is pretty standard in most tactic games, and this one is no exception to that rule. You'll have to be get digging through the rulebook to figure out what you need and what you don't need to know. Uh, for instance, there's a couple little things that I had uh, questions on, like for the Cabal, for instance, that was our first game we... I, I tried to destroy to destroy a land tile to get certain resources and whatnot because they can't build to to gain resources from buildings. So in that case, they get stuff from defeating enemies, destroying territories, and blowing up the land. I don't know what happens to the tiles when you defeat them. It doesn't necessarily say. I, I don't know if you remove them from the board or you need to put a token on them. Uh, I'm not too certain. I looked through the rules and couldn't find that. So there's a couple little things like that in the rule book that probably should be cleaned up. But otherwise, it is a solid tactics game. If you have any interest based on what I've explained to you now, it's something I strongly suggest taking a look at. I had a lot of fun with this one. Uh, even though I, I got smushed the first two games I played, there is a good learning curve. So I was able to come back in my third game and 
and, and bust it open. I, I took some people out with the Cabal, which is my favorite of the four different factions. Solid little tactics game. I enjoyed it. The Chronicles War of Indigar. Go ahead and take a look down below in the description if you're interested in picking up this game, which is likely going to have even more stuff that is going to be added to it, whether it be new characters and new factions and whatnot, because you can just simply mix and match and whatnot, as well as new monsters. Look forward to seeing what they come out with. Go ahead, look down below, let me know what you think. Thanks guys for watching. Have a happy October for Halloween, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. What's that? You want to get the get the kitty? Oh, you want to get the kitty? Get him!